But you yeah. were saying something earlier, like kind of about moods. Yeah. And I know, you know, you'd always, just because you're a professional athlete background, yeah. it's kind of, you're kind of like coming from this place where it's like the emotions stay as balanced yeah, as possible. And box, it totally, yeah. yeah, but I think it's kind of important because like, I think when we're trying to do something at a really high level, you don't want success and failure to be screwing your emotions up too much because you're going to be making mistakes and you're going to have successes and emotions can screw up both, you know? Yeah. Like, especially in football, right? Exactly. Like in football, it's like after 82 minutes, one team finally scores. Yes. Inevitably, like what the odds are like crazy high, like another team usually scores. They either score the second goal or they give up a goal within like five minutes. Exactly. And that happens all the time. And it's because the emotions slip out of, you know, they kind of slip. Often, yeah. Yes. So I get that whole idea of like why to try to control them. But I'm really wondering for you right now, like we took this acting class, this Meisner class a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And you're getting a little bit more in touch with emotions or at least for that yes. class. I mean, I, yes. And I'm just wondering like you, what did you notice afterwards? If, what were some of the things that you could like put a finger on after that? I mean, I learned that um, I should be more accepting of having a bad mood. Yeah. Because uh, I tend to put this, you know, I'm always happy uh, mm. mask on. Yeah. It's not necessarily a mask because I'm a very positive person, but still, um, I figure that it's okay to be mad. You know, if mm. it's okay if you wake up with a bad mood or you just don't feel like talking to someone or you don't feel like doing anything or you don't feel like being nice to someone. Yeah. Because it's okay. I mean, we are humans yeah. and then we have to experience these kind of emotions to be able to put it on the screen if it's, if it's requested or if it's needed. Yeah. And I have to gain more experience in that sense because I don't have too much of an experience in that space. Mm. So mm. if I want to develop myself as an actor, uh, then I have to go deep and I have to, and I have to, have to catch on those feelings and mm. be okay with it. Because otherwise I won't be able to reach what I'm aiming to reach. I don't want to be like a famous actor, you know, from Hollywood who, who does all the big things. I just, I just, I don't know how, it just happened all of a sudden that I got into acting, you know, mm. a small role. Yeah. And I felt really, really comfortable with it. Mm. And I really enjoyed it. Everything from, from top to bottom, from beginning to end. And um, even though when, when, I, when we had to wait for like 10 hours, when I had to wait for 10 hours and then we shot like for three, four hours, right. I was okay with it. Yeah. And now the rest of many actors, not all of them, but many of them were complaining like, ah, oh, we have to don't get enough you know, money for it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, like, why? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be famous. It's not my drive. I just really enjoy what I'm doing. Mm. And it's funny that when I was younger, when I've been to elementary school, it was the first experience I had as an, like an actor. Mm. And I got a role that I was the, we were mile, mice, a group of mice. Yeah. And there was a, a black cat, not, not, it's not me, not, not I played the black cat. But um, <laughs> I was the f first mouse who got caught, you know? I was the first one who died. Right. I had like two lines. And for the rest of the show, in three minutes, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> in a cage <laughs> yeah just, you have to stay dead yeah but that, 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 yeah yeah but the whole show what an incredible but one of the most important lessons in acting like if you it's like the idea is that if you die on stage one of the most important like criterion is stay dead exactly. yeah because it's like it's one of the most convincing things you can do right because if you start fidgeting around and losing it it's like oh shit you like completely blew the whole the whole like <clears throat> yeah, suspension does. of disbelief right yeah so i think it's a, it sounds to me like a really great lesson like you probably have to remember that you remember that task better than you would remember any of the lines you needed to I learn i can't recall any right that's what i'm saying so it's like the task is this it's it's already the thing right yeah <clears throat> but it's, i think yeah. yeah i think it's a, yeah i think it's an incredible thing like to be a performing artist in a way it's it's like a really noble thing to like a noble responsibility to take on in a way mm -hmm. right i mean it doesn't have to be but i think it should be like you're 
you're saying to potentially the viewers or to the audience is like, I'm going to go through things that that you don't have to go through. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like the stage should be a dangerous place where where difficult things happen to people. And so the audience gets to come and say, thank God that's not me or oh, wow, I kind of have a life like this, mm -hmm. or I remember something like that happened to her, or they go through these vicarious things. And performing artists are the ones who are like, I'm going to simulate that. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the simulation of that for you. And there's lots of different ways or styles that you can do this with, but it's like, I think to be in touch with those emotions is critical because it's like, the moment you see somebody's face or you see their body in action, you see the way they breathe, watch their eyes, any of us, like we're experts at going, oh, that's disappointment or mm -hmm. that's excitement or, oh, she's blown away or whatever. We see all that. We don't even say it. We just see it and feel it. And when actors are lost in that process, the audience starts breathing with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they start going through that whole thing. So taking that responsibility for that is the, is the key. That's the game. But it's like you said, I think like, I really think being an actor, I look at it this way. It's like, I feel it's like being an athlete. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the same thing. It's like, technically, I want to be in shape. I want to be in touch with these things. And I want to be able to do them when they ask for it to be done. And I want to be able to turn it off when, they, when I don't need it on. Yeah. And I think a lot of actors or a lot of people have different methods. They feel differently about it. But for me, that's been really important because I have three kids, a wife. I run a theater company. I do all these other things. And it's like, if I couldn't turn it on and off, that would be a nightmare. <laughs> what I found is that um, for the first few minutes, I just sit down, just talk slowly. I, I, sometimes I have to remind myself to talk slowly mm. because then it tricks my mind that I'm in a calm mood. Yeah. And then I, and I just uh, watch something maybe on the TV. I don't really use the phone. Mm. And when I go to, to bed, I, I read. Yeah. Because that, you know, it, it, it puts the focus away from whatever my mind is. And then I'm, I'm reading, I'm relaxing, and then it, it gets me into that very relaxed mood. And so I'm, I'm, ready, to, I'm ready to sleep. Yeah, and you're not on screens and lights and yes. these other stimulus. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I think going back to your question a little bit of like, do, what, what do I bring home with me? And it's like, yeah, you, you do bring home the kind of the hormonal jolt, like the energy, the anticipation, all of that stuff. <clears throat> but maybe thinking about the emotions and it's like I don't I think with the performance what's interesting is that though I kind of I've really learned I think over time or at least I've fooled myself <laughs> thinking that I know how to do this but I think I let the emotions kind of run through me I really ah. feel like a conduit like I feel like I fundamentally know how to feel them I kind of know how to understand them I kind of know how to portray them and I let them kind of access me for that time. And then whoosh, I let them go. And I've really, oh, I've really become, um, I think I've really become consistent at that. Uh -huh. And it's, and that, but that's an important step because I don't think it's given. It's not like, oh, this will always happen. Because your body, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you, your body doesn't necessarily know you're not in love. Like, right, if you're playing like you're in love, Yes. Your mind knows you're not in love. You're yes. not in love. But your body does not know you're not in love, right? Because yes. the way you experience that uh, is you're going to go through those feelings and those feelings will feel very real, right? Mm -hmm. and we do these kind of flirting techniques in some of the workshops that I run and immediately you can just watch people. If you just tell them to do some of the flirting type of physicalities with each other, they all start giggling and like laughing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, because there's no way... You're pretending that you're flirting and you're not really flirting and there's no intention of romance. Yes. But it's, you still feel the same. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's just really important to understand like, but that's just a passing feeling. And I think that's kind of the, the game of acting technically is, mm -hmm. for me at least, it's like, how do I access this? And then I let those feelings pass. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think it's going back to that idea of like, that's why it's a noble thing to do because Everybody's an actor, right? Like you said, you even have the mask of happy. Yes. Right? Uh, the, and the thing, everybody has their masks. Everybody knows them. Everybody knows how to lie to their mom and get away <laughs> with it. You know, even though your mom knows you're lying, you know, she yeah. even lets you get away with it because there's an act going yes. on. And it's like, we get that. 
uh, the, que the question is, can you do it for money over and over and over again? Yes. Right? It's Definitely. kind of like football, like, or whatever, or anything, really. It's like, you know, it, it, you can do, you know, you can do anything a few times, but can you consistently do it over and over again and expand yeah. on it? I think that's the thing. How did acting come to you? It came pretty naturally because it came, it's in, I was in grade school the first mm -hmm. times I did it. And I liked it, but I, and I was interested in it, but I didn't think of it as, I thought of it as games and fun and part of just being a kid. And I was in a class where we did plays for other kids in school, but it was really normalized. <laughs> so uh, I didn't think of it as like being anything too out of the ordinary. Um, <clears throat> we would go and watch other plays or we'd watch movies and we'd talk about them and study them together because I had a teacher who was very interested in creative dramatics and improvisation and he was teaching mm -hmm. it to all of us kids. But I didn't stick with it. I, I guess I went to some of the summer camps for a few years and I became a counselor at one of the drama camps, but I wasn't doing it all year round. And then I got into music and I was into sports and I was into other things. But once I was in university, I met up with some people who were doing more performing arts stuff and I realized that I kind of was interested in what they were doing and then they had me along and I started getting involved just that way again. But it, again, not something serious, just something that I had some understanding or knowledge of. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to Hungary, I lived near the Merlin Theater and I started going there and I met somebody who was producing concerts. They asked me to come and be like the liaison to the bands that would come from abroad. And there's the theater there. And then I started hanging out with the actors. And then I started seeing what was going on. And then just one thing led to another. And then ah. I was in productions. So it was kind of <laughs> written in the stars, right? It was kind of written in the stars. And like enough silly things happened one after another <laughs> that it just started making sense that, that I was doing that. Uh, somebody asked me to run a workshop for the actors because they needed to get their English skills up because they were going to go on tour in India with the show. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I just started doing certain things to help with that. But um, yeah, I think, I think I stuck with it because it's, it, I was always interested in storytelling mm -hmm. and I was always interested in um, what has an effect on audiences. I love music. I love concerts. I've always loved the I love what happens on a stage. I love what happens to an audience. Like I like, I like these dynamics. Yes, the vibration. Like, yeah. yeah. The energy which you're feeling. Yeah, but also the meaning. Mm -hmm. Like why we do this. I've always the thought, purpose. Yeah, the purpose. I've always been excited by why people go and what is the difference between them feeling like they were really happy they went or they really got something versus eh, not so much. Like I always think that's a... I think that it's the same with movies or a TV show. I always think it's really interesting. Like, why do I, why do I say, oh, I'm really glad I watched that? Or what was that? What was <laughs> you know? that? Yeah. Um, but I, one thing I was thinking, because this kind of ties in, you were saying, the, I felt like you put this idea together, like you're a really positive person. And yes. I've known you for a limited time, but I feel the same. Like, I definitely feel that from you. And then you said, but I have this happy mask. And I just think that's an interesting kind of pressure somehow. I want to know your take on this a little bit of like um, being a positive person, but feeling this pressure to kind of demonstrate a level of like happiness or satisfaction outwardly. Would, tell me about like how, mm. how that plays mm -hmm. into it or, or what, you, what you feel that pressure is from. Um, you know, I just, I don't want to let people doubt that I'm not, being happy all right. the time. Yeah. So that's kind of I'm um, coming from, you know, being the kind of person growing up in an environment where you had to be cautious what others think of you. Yeah. Um, especially in this area. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it might arise from that. And uh, I don't, I don't, I, I wasn't feeling comfortable um, talking about my emotions when I was younger. Yeah. So I had to reach a kind of um, a phase in my life or uh, I had to grow up enough, you know, to understand myself, my emotions, my 
and be comfortable with talk with with, with them and to uh, talk about them and to share with them with um, just a limited amount of persons, but still share them and had other have others help me or even just to hear me out. You know. Mm. Um, so it might what do you think that? What do you think a lot of that came from? Was that would you attribute that to just like this kind of image preservation of like saying there was so much pressure, just being in Hungary and being different in Hungary and just being interracial in Hungary or whatever. Uh, it might be, but also you know I'm, I'm come I'm, we are coming from a small town. Yeah, and everyone knew us. Mm. Everyone liked us. Um, so. I had to be cautious what I'm doing, what I'm saying all the time. I'm not saying that we were like, all my family was like very famous, but still, you know, right. we had to be cautious. Part of, of the, the community. Reputation. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it might arise, I think it comes from that, of, from that part more than anything else that, yeah. uh, you know, I wasn't, I was, I was a good kid all the time, all the time. Right. Not because I, but that's a I lot of pressure to, too. Yes, I mean, I obviously I did some some things that I shouldn't have done, maybe, but mm -hmm. I was in in between the borders, you know. <laughs> so I, I I never went too far. Right. I never went too far. If I went too far, I'm al I always said sorry for the person that I did the trick on. Um, and I and I always enjoyed making others uh, happy. Yeah. Um, even in the school, I was like kind of a, a class clown. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in, in the dressing room as well, so all the time I was one of the, and if it was jokes or fun or that we have to make to do some tricks or uh, treats on the others, then it was probably uh, my hand was in it. Right. <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot of pressure too, though. Yeah, you but you don't know this when you're yeah. young. You yeah, just yeah. do it yeah. because you just go with the flow. You're making others happy. Oh, that's cool. Huh? Oh, they yeah, like yeah. me and they're happy. Yeah, but that's that just smart. really, yeah, but that really puts a lot of, that can put a lot of pressure. Like that may be where that, that, that is maybe where that feeling comes from, right? Where it's like, I've got to have that happy look, that happy face, uh, because there's something to be maintained here. Yes. Because um, I kind of confused that for a while too, and I, I've had this discussion a lot of times, like to conflate the idea of, of being a positive person and versus being a happy person. Mm -hmm. like, and I think... Like positivity, I, I think the strategy of positivity is really the one that works. It's like, let's, let's figure that this is all going to work. I mean, it definitely is all going to work out one way or another. So it's like, it's so it's probably ultimately better to think about what the positive aspects or elements. So I think that is the way to go. That's the strategy. But I don't think it necessarily means you're happy, right? Like, yes. it's like happy, happy is... Because you know. get all the slaps from life. And you do, you're going to get them, yeah, and you're not going to be happy about it all the time. And, and also the thing is, is if you're always happy, and I mean, I know you know this, I'm not saying that, but it's like if you're always happy, then you actually really don't know what happy is. Yes. Right? So It's just getting natural for you and normal. Yeah. And, but I, I had this debate with my wife for a while because we kept talking about this whole thing of like, I don't know, she was, she was more in the camp of like, Let's do it. Let's do the thing. That be happy. Let's let's deal with it. Take it as a happy thing. Uh, you know, yeah, it's not great, but like, we're going to be happy about this and that. And sometimes I was like, I think in a part of it, she's right. But part of it for me was like, I don't know, man. I think happiness is almost a measurement of like social functionality. Like, I think if social creatures, like if... If we feel like we're functional, like we have a purpose, that we yes. belong here, then I believe that happiness is a product of that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it doesn't mean that it's all okay, right? It doesn't mean like it's all working. It doesn't mean that. It just means like overall, I feel like I'm part of this. I understand why this matters to me and I understand how I contribute to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the source for it. And then, but I think people get that all screwed up, right? Because they start falling in love with other things. Yes. They start falling in love with other stimulus or other needs or other whatever. And I just think that's an interesting trip. Like for me, that I have felt, because I could get weirded out about things or get my focus could get off and I start wanting something that I don't really need mm -hmm. or whatever. Or being grouchy about something I probably should give up on being grouchy about. But I kind of keep going back to that same idea of like, what is the purpose what is, what do, you know, do I belong? 
and you know, can I give something to this? And I think that ends up, I just keep coming back, like that is actually kind of always rewarded the most. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting idea where happiness arises from. Yeah. But it's always difficult to have, um, you know, um, shall we get a seat? It's always difficult, you know, to, get, to find the purpose that you really enjoy or the craft of what you, what you love to do. Definitely. Because for me, um, for me, football was one of the things that I really, really loved. Because when I when you do something and you get to the, to the state of flow, that I think you find that purpose um, that you want to do it. It's like a drive. Like you want to do it all the time. I want to get in that mood. And you know, if you do some sports or anything, that you know, there are many things that are out of your control. Sometimes you're not in the state of flow. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then you get, and you get, you know, question arises in you like, oh, is this really the thing that I want to do? Or is this my life that hmm. I should live? Um, and I don't want to be too philosoph philosophical on it, but um, I had these questions always in me when I got injured, especially when you get injured. Mm. That's that's mm. a, that's a different thing. That's like ah. Uh, you have to you have to talk about your emotions. If you're not talking about your emotions and if you're not clear about what's happening inside you, that can mess things up big time. Very difficult. Very difficult. And it's not just in that phase, but afterwards when you when you're in the process of of uh, getting back to your physical um, abilities and yeah, stability. healing healing just, process. That's that's like, and it can and with my with your confidence. Yeah, because you're physically you're 100 percent. That's fine. But if you're not comfortable in front of the call, let's say, um, or you have doubts in yourself, yeah. and then you have questions, what if I'm, what if I'm messing it up? What if I miss this chance? What's yeah. happening? Nothing happens actually. Yeah, but it goes on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But it goes on. But yeah. if I, if I'm focusing on, okay, I'm going to put it that way. I'm scoring that goal. Or if I just mess it up, but it goes into the other corner, but I still. It's not what I wanted to do, what I intended to do, but it, I still scored. Yeah. Scored. I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's been a lucky day. Yeah. So it, it's really, really about mentality and how, how you put it in your head. And, and it's, been, it's been very difficult. It's very, very difficult. And, and I had this deal with myself when the last time I got injured and I tried to, and I tried to make the, the last uh, ride, to, you know, to be a professional again. Uh, and I got injured literally the next day. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember literally, you told yeah, me that told story, you, right? You that. So and was, you're like, this is the sign. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sign that I, you know, you know, physically and, and, and mentally you're in the in the place, but as something happens and then it, and then it's, you know it's a sign from life, from God, whatever you you you, you name it. But I just I, I realized that okay, then it's it's not it, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be. I'm lucky enough that I had the chance to do what I did. And I, since then, I experienced a lot of things, especially thanks to football that I played it for a long time. And I met people that are still my friends and I can consider them my, my real, true friends. Yeah. And I can be grateful for, but, you know, it, it wasn't my thing. Though. But you get the discipline. Like, I really think that, that to try to be good at something that is difficult to really be good at, and that can be true for most things. I just think that it's invaluable right to just to be to get the humility of saying okay you're a good athlete and you're a good football player and you're even better than almost anyone you'd meet yeah. that would do it but then you get onto these teams and as the levels rise the competition rises and it's like the demand for you to improve and the methods you need to use to improve and the mindset you need to do that is i think it's invaluable Exactly. It's a, if you're in a reasonably healthy place with that, I think there are uh, unhealthy versions of that. Yes, yeah. But I think if you're in a reasonably healthy place with that, because you can apply that, to which anything. you get to do now, you get to apply that to acting now. Or to you get to apply that to whatever it is that's going to be the thing for you. Exactly. Because, I, because to really become great at acting, there are going to be different techniques you have to go through. But the mindset to get good at it is going to be useful for yeah, you. Yeah, to do whatever it takes every time. Well, it's the same thing of not getting too high and too low emotionally about the high, the about the successes and failures. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, it, it's 
I, where I think it's connecting with acting and, and, and uh, being an athlete or in sports, <clears throat> that you, even when sometimes you don't feel like you want to do that, but you have to do it. You got to do it. And then you start doing it, and it, you know that it's going to make you feel good that you did it, even though you didn't feel like doing it, but you did it. And then you'd be like, okay, I did that today as well. Yeah, yeah. So it, it helped me. And then you, sometimes you have to be very easy on yourself because... It's, it's, it's very difficult to find the right balance of how much you work you and how much you push yourself. Mm. And, and you have to find something else that can really ease your mind. And then you can just sh- shift your, your focus to something totally different other than sports or acting or whatever. Um, because, because it can really be very difficult to get out of it. And then it puts you in a cage. And, then, and you, you won't be able, I think... I don't have too much experience, but if I don't experience something else other than what I'm doing, it 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 can put a barrier on my creativity. Mm. Because then I'm going to think the same way. And if I I don't know if I start I don't know, handcrafting something, it might help me with creativity. Or if I do I don't know start I don't know, writing something, it helps me in a different way. But it might be useful. I I don't think there's a question. Yeah, I think it's because I think that these processes, they kind of come from the same place. You know, it's like you, you're still you, right? So it's like if you want to access creativity, regardless of where you're going to apply it, Mm -hmm. you're using a lot of the same skills, mindset, attitudes, problem solving things. They're all coming from the same place. It's like you have to you have to resolve or solve these these questions with the same, <laughs> with the same person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, what's cool about it. And with acting, have you ever had any goals that you wanted to reach? Well, that's a good have, question. Do, do I have any? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I would like to play, I would like to play a large role in a movie uh, once again. I did it, I've done it once or twice, and I did it once in a movie where I had a lot of shooting days and I played the principal role in a movie and the movie was never released. Mm -hmm. And that was a bit of a disappointment. On one egotistical side of like, it would have been nice to see what the reception would have been and that would have been a cool thing. On the other side, it's just, that was an awful lot of work for For no result. (laughs) Um, But I also heard very nice things from people for that work. So the people who did see it, I did get positive feedback, um, which I've never really been good at receiving, unfortunately. It's something I still have to get better at. But I would like that. I would like that again. Mm-hmm. I, my ambitions, are, I'm a little more like you, like my ambitions are really, I like working. So for me, the reward is the work. Mm-hmm. Usually that's enough for me. <laughs> yeah, because I can move on. Like it, I told you, it's like, I'm really, I, I'm happy to get into the work. I love doing it. And when I'm done with it, I'm really, I'm ready to move on, uh-huh. you know, and, uh, and I'm interested in what's next. But I would, I would like that. That mm-hmm. would be a good thing. What uh, kind of role do you see yourself in? Yeah, that's a good question too. Well, now, because I'm not as young as I was when I <laughs> did that role last, that was like over 10 years ago or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what would it be? I wouldn't mind if it was quite physical. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind if it was something, uh, uh, it could be, I like tragic comedy, you know, I like playing, I like both. And I wouldn't mind if it was physical. It could have some stunty things in it and stuff uh-huh. like that. So I wouldn't, I don't know, I, I'd have to think about like it. John Wick? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the new John Wick. I, read, I, I know I've seen some of the other ones, and that, but I, I've heard that the new one is really good. I don't know, but yeah. I don't think, John Wick, man, he, he's unbelievable. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, he's, on like, level. he's on another level, man. And that athleticism of that guy is crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if John Wick would be my thing, but um, yeah, I'd like to imagine it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but what, what would it be? I guess it could be, yeah, maybe it would be like a, a, the guy you didn't know was like a, <laughs> like a, uh, a uh, private detective or something oh, like yeah. that. Like, it's like he's living a whole other life and then like all of a sudden you realize like Maybe he's a spy, a spy of some sort. Yeah, that could be cool. Ah. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know, you know, because I think, 
I really like stories about people and I like watching people go through changes that matter in stories like that is really, I like watching relationships evolve in, in stories. I like watching characters of people evolve. Like as a viewer, that's what I like. So I'd imagine that I'd like that oh. as, a, as an actor too. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, but we'll see if that ever happens. I don't know. Yeah, it should. Yeah. That's, and then I want to talk to you about your acting uh, technique. Mm -hmm. if, do you have any specific thing that you're using or are you just... How often do you go back to your uh, experiences and then play something, you know, just because it comes easy? Uh -huh. How often do you really, or all the time, are you really in that, <clears throat> in that space physically, uh, em sorry, emotionally as where you are in physically as well? That's a good question. I, the way I would describe, so to answer the question quickly, I would say I try to be aware of several techniques that I spent quite a bit of time learning mm -hmm. and I try to be as fluid or as as kind of open to using them as I can with that being said I tend to be more of an outside in actor and what I mean by that is like I like to physicalize things or use voice or use expression or use kind of physical posturing to affect how I feel inside so I kind of build that way and then the, I believe like the emotional content or the, uh, you know, any of the, any of like the, the feelings or the, or the manifestation of what the emotional character is starts to formulate that way. So wow. in other words, if I, let's say that my character is one that's kind of tense and uh, is going to lose things that really matter to them, I might start by tightening my my stomach area and just building a little bit of tension and then seeing what it does to my voice. Mm -hmm. And then I build off of that for a little bit and I see if I find something real or find something that, that maybe does come from my past or maybe does come from a familiar physical place. And then I see, can I, I call that like an anchor. Mm -hmm. And then I see if that anchor can stick, if I can make that anchor work. And then if mm -hmm. like authentic sounds and authentic things can start coming from that anchor. Mm -hmm. That's maybe a technique that I visit a lot. 